Okay, on the bench today, out of a 1998 Jaguar XJ8, we have the good old ZF 5HP24. Got 99,000 miles on the clock. Um, a code scan was done, but I'm not sure what codes are present. I'm sure it could be. This has, of course, the common problem of slipping on takeoff, so we're dealing with a, a cracked drum, broken skinny O-ring, something to that effect. Something that has to do with the A-clutch circuit. There's a big hole in it somewhere, and it's causing the transmission to slip on a poloid because here, on the notes, it says slip on takeoff, then limp. So could be getting as like a stall monitoring code, which means the transmission is slipping on takeoff. Also could be getting maybe something like an output speed sensor code because it sometimes races up and doesn't move. So something to that effect, but I don't know the actual code that was present. Uh, it is not written down. Just uh, what we did was a code scan. So we scanned every module in the car and that gets saved uh, to, it goes um, automatically gets transferred to uh, the laptop computer that my uh, lead mechanic, it's pretty much his computer and then when we have to, uh, we have any questions he'll go into his system and print it out because he does pretty much, uh, my head mechanic does all the pretty much the diagnosing, electrical work and road testing so I want him to have access to all that stuff. So everything pretty much goes to his computer and also get stored on the scanner. So I got a call from a wholesaler, uh, I got a call uh, from this particular client that was recommended by one of my wholesale accounts. And of course she had says, um, it doesn't seem to be moving forward very good. And I says, well, how was your reverse? Have you tried reverse? She said, reverse is perfect. I said, okay, well, then we're dealing with a very typical problem. I explained to her what exactly happens. Um, you know, I'm thinking we're gonna of course find a blown A drum due to a worn pressure regulator bore and then which creates pressure spikes up to possibly seven eight hundred pounds and boom it blows the drum apart so she had the car towed in and sure enough uh, we confirmed the problem and here's the transmission on the bench now so i'm going to get a little closer and we're going to start the tear down i always like to film the zfs when i get them i actually have an 04 Land Rover here that's going to be coming out in a day or so, so I'm going to film that ZF6 HP26. I actually got a drive that I think that has problems in the lower gears, like first gear and takeoff, something to that effect. And it is full of fluid, um, but we're going to be doing an overhaul on that. A little tough getting parts for this. I do not have my overhaul kit yet, a couple of days. I should have it tomorrow. I ordered it a couple of days ago. The only thing I do have, uh, I have my filter. My OE filter, Filtran, made in Germany. And I have actually two sets of clutches right now. That's it. Everything else is coming from, from like Maryland, and Pennsylvania, and New Hampshire, scattered all over the place. But uh, what I do once we get these in and get okays on them, uh, I try to just get what I, because I know it's, it's, it's not easy. It's very, very difficult getting parts in a very particular on what parts I use, you know, I want OE ZF stuff for these transmissions. So um, sometimes the stuff is not close. But I pretty much gathered everything up I'm going to need. I'm going to call Ericsson's tomorrow for the converter, lower front section of the valve body, and or I have my F clutch piston also OE. Um, and just really waiting for my overhaul kit, more clutches, and then I got to call Ericsson's to get more stuff shipped out. Okay. So let, let me get a little closer. We're going to pull the bell housing off, probably pull the extension housing off, get those out of the way. Um, we can probably pull the front section out and just kind of confirm uh, what we're dealing with and then, you know, get everything else out, valve body, um, the rest of the gear train. And then we'll take a look at each part. All right, so let me get a little closer. It's just an O-ring probably belongs in the cooler line or something. I saw it laying there. I don't want to lose it. And we will begin. All right. So let's get the bell housing off. 17 millimeter. We got a long and short. That's the shorty. And there's the long. Pretty much a uh, pretty big difference. So no problem.
using my DeWalt gun and my snap-on uh, cordless battery chargers up. This is now my spare. Okay, see if we can knock this bell off. Okay. Get rid of this. I'm sure this was not drained. Pump out. Input speed sensor. Really not seeing too much, so let's see what happened here. You know, it could have maybe just blew and she stopped driving the car. Alright, so let's take a look. Looks like it made a clean break here. Skinny o ring is still intact, but there you go. Probably to, uh, came up too high and probably tore the seal, I'm sure, but there is the problem. All right, so let's get our bearing out here. This bearing is good but these things have a huge failure rate so automatically 100% even though this thing is good I am changing it all right another bearing was there along with this race here okay all right well, over here let's get the C drum Okay, got another bearing here. All right, so these bushings in here, I made a video on this once. I did, I did an overhaul on an X5, and I think it was, uh, I think I might have, the name of the video might have been Andy's BMW X5 or Andy's 5 HP24, something like that. So we did the overhaul, typical, you know, I believe it was a blown drum. And then uh, about two weeks later, I get a call that when it's real, real hot, it has no reverse. So, and I made a video about that too, because it took me a couple of days to figure this out. But I figured that it was leaking so bad that these, the bushings were a little worn out and it was leaking so bad that uh, when the oil thinned out, it was just bypassing the bushing. So, uh, I got a, I didn't have the bushings at the time, but uh, Ericsson's uh, has these in stock with new bushings. I think they make them, maybe a little uh, um, thicker than normal. Uh, so they, you know, maybe they last a little longer, don't wear as much. So that's what I did and uh, fixed the car. They're pretty good over there. They got a lot of stuff, a lot of knowledge too. Okay, let's get back off here and then we'll flip it get the pan down valve body we got the rest of the gear train out these are nice uh, nice to work on and really you know honestly not that bad it's uh, really easy to rebuild too
That's that over in here. And we got a ship. That I don't want to lose. All right, we can't get this out yet because we have to remove the the uh, valve body for the output speed sensor. But here is the shim. We're gonna keep it in a safe place. Every time I keep something in a safe place, I can never find it afterwards. So. All right, so, I don't know, that thing was kind of rusty. Let me see if I can get that out. Uh, this thing will drain. And, when you, and I, got a, I got an OE ZF kit coming, so I get all new, you know, come with all new, new plugs. All right. This is one of my favorite tools I bought from Snap-on. I think I had bought a socket set, maybe flex sockets or something, and they and they gave me this free. But this thing is awesome. I love this tool. I'm sure, this is. Uh, you know what? It might be drain because it does have a drain plug. Nope, but not. Okay. Alright, so that's draining out. So, what we can do here, uh, I guess we can go ahead and get the snap ring out. Let me pick this back up. I'm in a little bit. Alright, so we got the snap ring here for the center support. Um, let's get that snap ring out. See if we can get it moving. Wow, there you go. Easy peasy. Okay. Our retainer for the wire harness. That little horseshoe there. I'm just gonna push that in and make sure we get that moving. All right. All right, let's get this pan down. Now this stuff looks a little rusty here. We have to replace some of these bolts here.
zip them off. Alright, not too bad. filter okay. I right, don't forget made in Germany okay so this can stay we're gonna get the output speed sensor that's out, you can go ahead and remove this fork here and the exciter ring for the output speed sensor. Okay. All right. Now these are all 27 bolts, but the bolts that have to come out have a larger uh, head on them than the ones that hold the valve body together. Still kind of, you got to kind of look at them. Still a little kind of, you know, might take one or two out, but it shouldn't be. That's fine. Most of them are here. Looks like we got maybe two more left. Okay. All right, so, valve body wise, 
Here's the lower front section that is going to be replaced. That's where the pressure regulator valve lives. Okay, also the back, these tend to get a nice crack along here. And when you get, and when that happens, oh, there is a bunch of crap on this uh, uh, input speed sensor. When that happens, it may fall out of speed when you come to a stop in drive. It may neutralize and then come back. Okay. All right, now, got to get the springs, the seals out. Let's see how well that goes. that one. But if all else fails, I can always get one from Ericsson's. Okay. All right, so now we got to take, see if we can get these seals out. And here's one. So there's a bolt that I have that's actually out of a Honda, kind of steps down and this fits in there per perfectly. And that's what I use to get the seals out. All right, now we got the feed tube here, so we're gonna take this bracket off. Don't wanna lose that. Puff this out so we can get the center support out. but I got to get some stuff from Ericsson's anyway, but they should have them. All right, so let's see if we can get the center support out. Actually, no big deal. It's about five minutes. So, there we go. And here are our little goodies that keep the center support from turning. One on each side. This one might be stuck on there, which is fine. You can leave it. I just don't like to lose them when I'm washing it up, so. 
set. Output. And sun gear. All right, now we got the F clutch run. Oh. And that has the T40s all in the back. So I'm going to get my uh, shocker and I'm going to do most of them. And We'll do the last couple together and get the drum out and then take a look at uh, our clutches. We'll take a look at our pump and go from there. All right, so I'll be right back. All right, so I got three left. And I don't know, these things aren't coming loose so easy. A couple of hits that normally come loose, but not coming. Oh, there we go. Some of them really have that four or five times. So that's all of them. All right. Oh, you know something? I didn't see my little clip, so I probably lost it. I think that's actually the first time that happened to me. All right, well, let's get these out. These are these Torque 40. They are available separately, just in case they strip out or whatever the case may be. the F clutch drum. Alright, so case is stripped. Oh, I heard something at the bench. There it is. Got it. Okay, so I am good. Alright, so next step, I'm going to get rid of this oil and we're going to take this stuff apart, check everything out, and that's it. I'm going to get clean up, get organized, and I'll be back shortly. All right, let's take a look at these clutch packs first. All right, so we have the A clutch, which is our problem. I'll be able to get these things out. Not sure. You can still see the writing on them. Ninety-nine thousand miles, and these things are, are still are still good, but it's getting a banner kit. Wow, real nice shape. Okay, so there's your eight foot. All right, remember, um, you got the skinny O-ring here. If this breaks, it's going to cause it to slip. All right, so don't forget about that, and also just. Make sure you grease these uh, rings up really good when you load this, when you load the pump on or the your pump and stator on because if it's out a little bit, it'll go down, may not feel any resistance and just slice the ring. So just uh, load those up, you know, when uh, I get a lot of questions of people asking, you know, what is that stuff for you? So this is... Uh, uh, loop guard. This is assembly glue or trans gel, and this is the stuff to use because as soon as the transmission heats up, this melts. 
So this is really, really good stuff. You know, the uh, instead of using, you know, this like the high temperature wheel bearing grease or something, and I really can't use that. But that's the stuff they get. I'm sure you can find it like on Amazon or something. Or, you know, I get it through my supply at Transstar, and their online ordering system is called Transcend. And I think they're, if you're going to get it through Transcend, uh, I think, I believe their part number, this is like the, the good stuff, the blue. So I think their part number is M465TB, Thomas Boy. And this should come up with this, and then you can uh, you can get this stuff. And the TB is, um, you know, blue. I'm thinking tub of blue. The green might be TG, but it's M465. That's like the, the, the port number. M465 TB. All right, here is the C-clutch. Again, very nice. Very, very nice with 100,000 miles on it. Okay, the B clutch. Now, what normally happens to the B clutch is we get some embedded metal in the friction discs from the uh, clutch pack um, from the A drum blowing. All right, so like for instance, this one, you know, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but you know, we got a little up here. That's why we just automatically, you know, anything I do is going to get a banner kit. So this is the B. So we have the A, B, and the C. Okay. This here is your D clutch, and the C clutch fits inside here. All right, this, this is a, well, let's take this, check out the frictions first. Then there's the sleeve. sleeve here that I'm going to knock out. Right there it is. That goes right in here. It has all rings on it, so we change those. Okay, this is the E-clutch. Okay, and again, not bad. So let's get that snap ring out. Uh, where are my snap ring pliers? Okay, snap ring. Snap ring. Okay, here is the sprig. This is the low sprig. I'm sorry, yeah. Okay, that looks good. You know, these F clutches, I always change, well, I always change them, like I said, but, you know, this seems like it has a little too much play in it, right? And if you look, if you look at the clutch, you know, it really looks very good. But then when you stack up the new one, you're going to have half the amount. So these clutches can look good, but be worn out, is what I'm getting at. All right, so you have the F clutch piston. This is a piston that tends to debond. It has a split ring in here. Actually, you know what? Let me put you on hold. I'll take the rings out and we'll take a look at the piston. I mean, reverse was fine, so I'm sure the piston is gonna be fine, but let's take a look at it anyway. All right, so let me do that and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so I got the uh, split ring out here for the F clutch. All right, here is the Novo return spring. Here is the piston. So this piston is good, but I've seen them around in this area here uh, debond and the result is slipping in reverse. But this is another one. Always replace this piston and only replace it with OB. Okay, so that's that. Let's take a look here. All right, so our pump. First, let's look at the pump 
body and gears, and then we'll get the flow control valve out. Um, and that's probably about it. Okay, where did I put my socket again? a little bit okay so I'm getting all these 27 bolts out around the outside and then there's one here so these here I talked these I probably torqued these down about 100 inch pounds around the, the outside ones, and then this one gets done to about 70. Okay, so let's, here, here. out. All right, so let's put this over here for now. All right, here is our body and gears. We have a dowel pin. We have a pump plate. Okay, and we have our body and gears. So we got dots here, the dots face up. You know that these pumps are pretty good. Very nice. Okay, and the front seal, there is a snap ring that's got to come out over in here. Uh, this has a bearing, this is a pushing. And here we're going to do the flow control valve. And we're going to need a 17. No, we will not need a 17. I believe we'll need a 9. Yes. Okay. Set that open. And here's the spring and retainer. So that's going to go like that. And valve out. I like this better where you can actually take the valve out when you're dealing like with the Audi transmissions you can't take it out and if it gets stuck it's not going to move. So this is the setup. And I think in the ZF overhaul you get you get a new one of these. Alrighty. That is it. Just get the valve body back here one more time, real quick. <sighs> All right, so you can see the crap on the input speed sensor. There's your input, there's your output speed sensor. Now, these speed sensors are the same, so if you have you know an input speed sensor code, you can swap them and see if the code changes. So they are the same. All right, these solenoids on these 5 HP 24s, rare. Rare, rare, rare. Go bad. I don't think I've ever changed them. Well, the only time I did change them is when the transmission was full of water. Then I changed them. But other than that, these solenoids never go bad. All right, this is the front lower section of the valve body that I will be getting from Ericsson's. 
Um, what they have also instead of, because the casting got a little expensive, they get the casting with the second design valve, which is fine, or you can get one that they reamed out with an oversized pressure regulator valve. They used about six of them, never had a problem. I'll tell you, those guys are fantastic over there. All right, and the upper rear section, you just want to look at, again, for cracks that come along here. This section here, this uh, lower rear, not really too many problems with it. It's always, uh, you know, pretty good on really, really early ones. You know, they have the accumulators here, and they claim the accumulators do crack, so on the really early ones, when these transmissions first came out, not really sure what year that was. Um, might have been, I don't know, I'm thinking, uh, you know, not far from 98, so I'm probably gonna wind up checking these things anyway. But this, we found the problem with it. Um, uh, but they do have updated pistons since then, but there are two in here. You know, depending on what the problem is, I check them. Okay. All right, and I think that is it. This planetary here, this is gonna come off. There's an opening here. There's a washer that goes there. You can always take this stamp ring out. You know, this, this stuff is usually pretty good. Really not much of a, of a problem with, with this. But take this out, and this is going to be the ring gear. To come out. Okay, planet. We've got a washer sun gear, and then there's another stack ring, okay, and another planet here. Oh, I can wash this up actually. All right, so that is that. All right, so to recap, 1998 Jaguar XJ8 ZF5HB24 slips on takeoff and then goes into limp mode. We found the A-drum, typical number one problem with this A-drum is cracked. So we know why that happens due to pressure spikes, uh, due to a worn pressure regulator valve bore. So that will be addressed. And batter kit, A-drum, uh, F clutch piston, converter, lower front section of valve body, typical overhaul, 5HP24 stuff. And that is it. So I thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. We will see you next one.